How do you feel about Islam now? So I feel much comfortable, much easier. No, alhamdulillah. I have also heart for Quran and understand. Why? Because when you look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was walking, talking Quran. He was a human being. And he felt and he dealt with the daily issues and concern. Once you address those, once you put yourself in that, and you understand the life and seed of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you will understand that he was walking, talking Quran, and his entire life was Quran, and Quran was walking in, in, in the form of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's when whenever we have a question about Islam, we go straight to Quran and life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran itself is a theory, a textbook. You might not be able to understand it all by itself. But when it comes to practical aspect, we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever we have a question, unfortunate, it's a reminder for me and all of us, when Muslims today start looking from bottom up, this must be khatib, this must be imam, this must be local scholar, local sheikh, and so on and so forth, and we go from bottom up. And then so and so scholar overseas, and then so and so graduate from so and so university, and so and so madhab, and then we go up to the Aima, and then we go to Tabat Abin, and then we go to Sahabi, and then we go to Muhammad Baraj Din, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then Quran. We go back. By the time we get that far, we lost. But today, just you know, go, go home and Google the basic pillar of Islam, and watch a couple of videos on YouTube. You watch 10, 15, you get confused. What's going on? Because we're going bottom up. By the time we get to 1400, we have last halfway through. And we are so rigid and stubborn that this is my Imam is right. My Sheikh is right. My scholar is right. My school of thought is right. My, 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 my. And we don't realize it. There's only one Imam who's right. It's Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you start from top down, these things will get much clearer. Matter of fact, crystal creel, pristine religion when it comes to Quran and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nobody can ask you oh, well, which school of thought you follow I follow the book of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I follow the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sila here is authentic hadith brother this is what it is, you can check yourself Allah Akbar, easy Udin is so easy but by the time I ask you, be honest to yourself it's a reminder for myself and all of us somebody gets up and pray we make a judgment call, you know, you're okay at hand, he's you know, raising his finger or not, you know, hands are up here, hands are down there. We will make so many judgment calls about a person who's praying in the masjid with us as a Muslim. We will make so many judgment calls and we will label that person based on so and so fake and so and so imam. Again, it's up to you. Who are the scholars you follow? May Allah bless all those scholars, all the Muslims who passed away. May Allah grant them jannah to those. Those who are alive, may Allah guide them. Those who are coming after us, may Allah make such kajaya for us. We have no issue with any scholar. But what issue we have is that we should not make it a binding authority that we can come to the point that we have fist fight, we have judgment calls, we pick on each other and we label each other. And that's something we need to completely keep it out of our daily practice because that's not part of Islam. Part of Islam is look at Quran and look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam life because he has done what Allah required him and that Allah documented in the Quran in Surah Maida Al-Yawm Akhmatullakum Deenukum Today the deen is complete So therefore if deen was complete if you can't find it there's something wrong with your research but deen was complete therefore look back at the Quran because there's the only one mojza of any prophet any prophet alayhi wa sallam from starting from Adam to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only one Moza that is alive today and will be alive and will not be tempered and changed and that is the Quran This is the only Moza that will live forever and ever Why? Because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last messenger and that thing is the, that book is the only thing that can bind us that can keep us together <laughs> because there is no temperament so when we come back to the book in life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam life is very simple let's look at the context of women rights in Islam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the first message revelation, the wahi, where was he? Okay, head off, right? We all know that questions that when we're going to act upon when we're going to find out when we're going to learn the lesson when are you going to ponder about this book when are you going to ponder about Sira Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we know every single person here knows even three year old kid will know that yes he was in a bar a bar a era a cave of era yes what happened when Jibreel Alayhi Salaam come Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told Ikra Surah number 96 we know that 
What happened after the encounter? Where did he go? Where did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam go? When it comes to women in Islam, this is the sirah. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ This is the uswa. This is the sirah. When you look, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was there in the shock, in the situation that he didn't encounter before, and he was in the chaotic situation, he didn't know what to do, what's right, what's wrong. Straight comes from there. Where does he go? Abu Talib. Muhammad father was not alive. His mother was passed away because it was the age of 40, right? Who was alive at that time? Abu Talib, who acted like his father, who took care of him as a father. But where did Muhammad go? He goes straight to Fatidah and ask her, what do you think? This is what happens. And Fatidah said, don't worry, you're honest, you're gentle, you're always righteous. Don't worry, Sadiq al Amin, nothing will happen to you. You know, we'll take care of it. Allah has also told you, maybe as, so you know the dialogue what happened. Then she takes her, takes him to a, a workshop in Nova and for his is there. But the question is that this is a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you as a husband are in a chaotic situation, are confused, or you need an opinion, you go to your own spouse and ask her, what do you think? How many times did you consult your spouse? How many times you will make a part of conversation? You keep the relationship. A reminder for my, myself and all of us. We keep at the what need to know basis. Well, you don't know. You don't need to know. It's a need to know basis, but you don't need to know. This is the relationship we have. But when it comes to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he consulted his wife. That's what our Dean teaches us. We need to get them involved and engaged. <laughs> A huge segment of our population is isolated. When it comes to decision making massages, the board of directors, when it comes to make, making decisions about local and youth group, we have no say, none whatsoever. But let's talk about it. What did the Quran teach us? We have the Quran. Nothing going to change. But what's the next thing? Is hadith. So enough that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today we don't have it. Because we don't get to see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How did he perform wuzu? How did he interact with the kuffar? How did he interact with the neighbor? We don't know. But this has been documented in the books. For if you are the Sunno, it's Bukhari and Muslim. If you are the Shayyo, it's Asul Kafi. So this is documented there. So this is binding authority for Muslims after Quran. Who has narrated more hadith? <coughs> Do you know? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She taught so many Sahaba. She lived many, many decades after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. So our deen is submitted and transmitted and documented and preserved through a woman. Think about it. Oh brother, your Islam, your religion say that you have to have two witnesses. But when it comes to my deen, when it comes to uh, my dunya, my akhira, my forever and ever life, it's only one woman submitting it. Aisha why don't we ask for two? The ayah that in the Quran talk about two witnesses are the longest ayah in the Quran that has a different context. But when it comes to a woman's testimony, that's a different context. When it comes to deen, one woman submits, we submit to that. We take it as authority. So let's talk about inshallah about those four categories that we have to discuss quickly. If, as, as for daughter, if you have daughters, this is a culture. I'm familiar with the culture that I'll talk about, but I'm not familiar with other cultures. Subcontinent culture, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan. Today, even we have a woman, I mean, daughter born, people kind of sort of not in us, in a mood to celebrate, not to appreciate that much. You have a son, the streets go around, people are celebrating, congratulating each other. Cultural, cultural issue. Still, today, we're talking about. But what did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do when he had a daughter? Sahaba sitting and asking, Ya Rasulullah, what happened if somebody has three daughters? Keep in mind at that time the daughters were buried alive. It was a stigma. It was a stand. Nobody wanted to talk about them. They were burying them alive. At that time, a Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, what does Islam say about daughters? How, what, what does Islam say? Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, if you have three daughters, they are shielded from you and Jahannam. You take care of them, and off they go. This is a shield between you and Jahannam. The Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, what happened if you have two daughters? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, same thing. It is shield between you and Jahannam if you take care of your daughters. And then the Hadith and the Shari, they say, you know what? 
the Sahabi didn't ask because they respect Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if they would ask, Ya Rasulullah, what happened if I had one daughter, Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is Kareem, Rahmatullah Alameen, he would have probably said, yes, one daughter is also she. So those who have daughters at home, your Jannah is in your house. This blessing is in your house. How much time you spend with your daughter? How do you treat your daughter? When Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatima Radiya Allah used to come, he used to stand up. When was the last time you gave hug to your daughter? You talk to your daughter, try to listen to your daughter. If you have two daughters, usually they talk to each other like, oh my God, be quiet. Did you? This is the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is your walking, talking Jannah in your house. That's the Bashara, that's the news from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you have two daughters, the Jannah. Three daughters, the Jannah. Let's talk about sisters. It's a great Sahabi Abdullah. Great Sahabi. His father Abdullah, he was handicapped, he used to limp when he used to walk. But Abdullah, Jabir bin Abdullah had seven sisters. The Manaji come, the announcement come from Battle of Ohod that we need people to come and fight. No, the father is never sad, Abdullah, quiet. The son asked Jabir, he said, you know, my dad, what happened? He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa summoned for jihad to fight and I want to fight but unfortunately I have something, some concern and I'm sad about it. So why? Oh my father, why are you concerned? I, and the father answered to son, he said, I want to go for jihad. I want to fight and I know I'll give my life in path of Allah. But only concern I have that I have seven daughters and when I die, who will take care of them? And if you promise to me, my son, I want to go. Son said, I want to go dad. Because you have Ozer, you have excuse, you are limping, you don't have to go for jihad. He said, no, I want to go. The argument happened, discussion happened between son and father. And son said, let's go to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They go to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And son says, Ya Rasulullah, he has Ozer, he doesn't have to go to jihad. I want to go to jihad, I want to sacrifice my life. And the father gets up and says, Ya Rasulullah, I have Ozer, yes. But I, you know, he started walking. He said, I want to live in front of you, Ya Rasulullah, here. And I want to live the same way in Jannah with you. I want to go for jihad. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, Abdullah, I want Jabal. You have to listen to your dad. So he goes for jihad. He dies. He gives his life. May Allah grant him Jannah. Then what happened later on? Abdullah, I mean, Jabal bin Abdullah, Raja Allah, married a lady. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, Jabal, did you marry? He was a rich person. He had a lot of gardens. So Jabal, did he marry? Yes. yes. Who was she? She asked Allah elderly person. Elderly? Why? Did I marry anybody? She <coughs> asked Allah, remember when we came to you, at that time I promised to my dad that I will take care of my seven sisters. So I wanted to have a person who can take care of my sister. So I wanted to have an elderly person who can manage and maintain my sister and my household. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the Tirmizi hadith 27 times, raise his hand and make dua for Abdullah, for Jabir bin Abdullah, that you took care of your sister. May Allah grant you Jannah. May Allah grant you the blessing of this dunya. He took care of his sister. When was the last time you talked to your sister? Again, the culture that I'm familiar with, people don't go to each other's houses. Oh, you didn't come to my birthday, you didn't come to my wedding. Oh, I don't want to go to my sister anymore. I don't want to talk to my sister. When the authentic hadith in Muslim and Bukhari, that if you have more than three days no relationship with your Muslim brother and sister, you, if you die, you die in the state of kufr. So we have to think about it. And let me give you quickly two more examples. When it comes to women, read Surah Baqarah. The wife, when it comes to wife, Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse number 187, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is your garment and you are their garments. What does garments do? It protects me, it makes me look good, it hides me if I have any surgery. It makes me presentable myself. That's what we are, old woman does to us. It protects us. We protect her sacred. That's what our deen teaches us. They, they will in, in, you know, enhance our religion. They will remind us if we have good relationship. Don't get involved in this business. Don't get involved in here. If we have a relationship like that. The Quran says they are over labas, over garments, with their garments. I don't have much time to go in detail. Last thing about mother. We already know there is more than four ayah in Quran, Babil Wale Dene Iksana. We already know the Jannah is at the feet of mother. Why at the feet of mother? What a big deal. At the feet of mother because you think that dirt goes on feet. That you know, most filthiest thing that in your organ body can be when you walk in, you know, in any in street, any path, any dirt, it's your feet. You think the dunya looks dirty with mother's feet. But your Jannah, Khairun Wabata, your eternity, your forever life is beneath that to take care of your mother. And go, I don't have again time, but go and read the story of Awais Kearney. 
It was not a Sahabi. It was not a Tabatabi. And what happened? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Umar, there's a person who will come from you know, Yemen, a waste. If it's you know, from Kurd. When he, when you meet him, Umar, Umar bin Khattab, when you meet a waste, currently ask him to make the war for you. Allahu Akbar. Khalifa al Mu'mineen. And several years from Hajj after Hajj, we have been chasing, trying to find out who is this Awais. Finally met him because I don't have time to go in detail. And he asked Awais, Awais, can you make dua? See, Ya Khalifa al Mu'mineen, you should make dua for me with the Hajj. Say, no, 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 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me that you make dua for Umar and for Umar. Why? Because he wanted to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so badly. He wanted to come to Medina. He wanted to spend time with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wanted to give up his life for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for Jihad. But he couldn't do it because he was taking care of his mother. This is the Bashara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us wisdom, vision and strength that we go back to the ayat, we go back to the Quran and Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We spend time with our families. Oh, you know, we, we come back with the best hadith that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, best among you is who's best to lay aside with their women. May Allah give us